In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem calculating the pH of a salt solution. So in this problem, you're going to be given the concentration of, a, of an ionic compound and you're asked to come up with the pH of the solution. The first thing that you need to do is figure out which component of this ionic compound is actually contributing to or causing the solution to have a particular pH. So this means that we need to think about the, um, the ionic compound in terms of its cation and anion. What is the cation? and what is the formula of the anion. It's going to be helpful for you to maybe consult a table of polyatomic ions. This is definitely one of the trickiest parts of these problems is just being able to recognize the cation and recognize the anion. So um, what I've done here is written out the formula of the cation and the anion. Once you get this, once you get that part figured out, what the cation is, what the anion is, you have to classify the acidity uh, or the acidity or basicity of each of these ions. Cations are either acidic or they are neutral. This is one of the acidic cations. As a refresher, the neutral cations are the ones that are in group 1a on the periodic table or group 2a. And since this is not in group 1a or 2a, it is acidic. Anions are all either neutral or basic. There are five basic anions, and this chloride ion is one of the basic anions. Um, the basic anions are chloride, bromide, iodide, nitrate, which is NO3 minus, and then perchlorate, which is ClO4 minus. And that's something I covered in a previous video. So since we've decided that this particular guy right here is the acidic component of this, of this ionic compound, this is the component, this is the ion that is going to be causing this solution to have a particular pH. Once we have that um, acidic ion identified, or maybe in a different problem it might be basic, then what we want to do is write a balanced equation showing this cation uh, being an acid. So we want to react the cation with water in an acid-base reaction. And we know that this is an acid, which means that it's going to be an H plus donor. So over here on the product side, we're going to write the formula after this guy has donated its H plus. So we're going to go from three hydrogens down to two, and we're going to drop the charge from plus one down to neutral. That H plus that our acid is losing is going over to the H3O plus ion. It's really important that you know how to predict the products of these acid-base reactions, and that's going to be essential in terms of being able to solve this problem correctly. If we had decided that we had a basic anion uh, instead of an acidic uh, ion, we would also write an equation showing the basic anion reacting with water. The products, of course, would be different because it would be a base reaction. So once we get that equation set up, then we are ready to make our ice table. Um, the initial concentration of this cation is going to be the initial concentration of the ionic compound. Just as kind of a refresher, the ionic compound is going to completely dissociate when we put it into solution. So if we start with 0.75 molar of the ionic compound, it's going to dissociate to produce 0.75. 0.75 molar of the cation and also 0.75 molar of the anion. Uh, initially, we do not have any of these products at all inside our solution, so that's going to be a zero. And then some of this is going to react, but we don't know how much of it's going to react, so we're going to use our minus x notation. And we're going to assume that x is really small, so at equilibrium it's just going to be 0.75. The pH of this solution is going to be coming from the H3O plus concentration, so we just need to figure out what this X value is, and then we'll be able to uh, calculate the pH. pH is negative log of H3O plus, and in this ice table, H3O plus is being represented by X, so it's just going to be the negative log of X. So to solve for x, we need to write an equilibrium expression. This is going to be a Ka because this is an acid. We decided it was an acid. And our Ka is going to be our products. So that'll be x squared over our reactant 0.075. Now the problem is not going to give us the Ka value, and I'll tell you that for all of these Alex problems, you're never going to be given the Ka value, or if this was a base, the Kb value. It's just not going to happen. And this problem, I am being given a pKb value of 4.87. So not only is it not a Ka, 
It's also not even a KB. And so what we need to do next is take this PKB and turn it into a KA. Now, first of all, if we had been given a KB equation, we would be able to convert from KB to KA using um, this equation right here, KW equals KA times KB. So if we knew KB, we would be able to say KA is KW divided by KB. K, KW is our constant, 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So if we knew the KB, this problem would be easier. We could just plug KB into this equation, and then we'd have our KA. But instead of having K B, we have PKB. PKB and PKA are kind of like pH, or they're calculated in the same way. Much like pH is the negative log of H3O+, plus, PKB is the negative log of KB. And also PKA is the negative log of I realized that I wrote an A up here. PKB is the negative log of KB. PKA is the negative log of KA. We um, can go from, I was trying to find a good place to write this. I'm actually going to take, take this down here. Um, so just like we can anti-log the pH equation, we can do the same thing with PKB. So KB would be 10 to the negative PKB. And Ka could be calculated using 10 to the negative pKa. So we can use those equations. Uh, another similarity between these equations and pH is that pKa plus pKb is going to be equal to um, 14. So we've got these like these equations right here that we can use and we can, you know, there's a couple different strategies. There's a more more than one way that we could get to the KA. Remember, we're trying to figure out what our KA is. We've got more than one option of what we could do. We could take our PKB value, it's 4.87. We could plug it into this equation and get KB. And then we could plug KB into this equation and get KA. Another option that we could take is to take our PKB value and plug it into this equation and calculate PKA and then plug PKA into this equation to get to KA. It's two steps no matter how we do it. So, you know, we can do it kind of however we want. Uh, I think I'm going to take that last option. I am going to, I'm going to shrink this up a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do is use my PKB, which is 4.87. I'm going to say pKa is 14 minus the pKb, 4.87. So that is going to be 9.13. And then my Ka is going to be 10 to the negative pKa, which is 10 to the negative 9.13. Um, for my calculator, I can just use that form of Ka. 10 to the negative 9.13 is x squared over 0.0. I don't know why I keep trying to put a zero there. 0 0.75. 10 to the negative 9.13 times 0.75. And then we'll take the square root of that. This gives me, I'm really running out of a lot of room here, this gives me an x value of 2.36 times 10 to the negative 5. And I'm going to plug that into my pH equation. pH is the negative log of 2.36 times 10 to the minus 5. And we are almost done. This is a really tedious problem. 4.627. Alex wants one decimal place, pH of 4.6.